I'm here today with an original 3DS. It's a little scuffed, it doesn't look too bad overall, but we wouldn't be here if it didn't have a problem. When I try to power it on, it makes that popping noise and shuts off, usually accompanied by a screen flash. This is reminiscent of an earlier fix done on the channel with a 2DS exhibiting the exact same behavior. I'll put a link on the screen to that video if you want to check it out. It's time to see what awaits us inside this thing. I'll use a 2mm Phillips bit for the whole teardown, starting with these four screws to remove the back plate and the battery. This unit does not have a stylus, but you'd want to remove that if by some miracle yours does. Now we'll remove all 10 screws on the back shell, noting that they're all the same type except for the silver one near the game slot. Carefully lifting up the back shell reveals the board and shoulder button cables, which we'll disconnect now. At this point, I want to start simple. I know that there are a few different screen cables that can cause a problem like what we have here, if they are damaged or otherwise don't have a good connection. You can see that pivoting the upper screen at the hinge imparts motion on some of these cables, which I imagine over time could lead to fatigue failure. But in the spirit of keeping things simple, all I'm going to do is disconnect and reconnect the primary upper screen cable and see if this fix is really that simple. It is not that simple. So we've got to go in deeper. The SD card slot and joystick both have two screws and a cable to remove them. The SD board also has an adhesive under it, and a plastic spudger is very useful to pry it up. These cables are for the lower screen, and they could also be responsible for the problem if they have a weak or bad connection. But they look good here. Regardless, we'll start disconnecting everything we can see. We're in full teardown mode at this point. After that, we have two more screws on the right side of the board, and four on the left, still holding it down. We pull up this little volume board, and then work out the main board, which has an annoying little bit of adhesive under the charging port. Now we can remove the last screen cable. Off camera, I've loosely reconnected all the flex cables to rule out the ZIF connectors as the issue, since earlier I only checked one of them. Interestingly, I'm now getting some life out of the system as the backlights on both screens turn on. It's an intriguing result, so I decide to put it all back together and see if it just works. About halfway through doing that, I test things again, and then this happens. Oh no. Check this out again. Lids open, system's on, we're all good. Until I fold the screen down. So at this point, I could just put it all back together and pretend there's no issue. As long as I don't rotate the lid, you'd never know the difference. But I won't do that to y'all. That isn't why you come here. To be lied to? Or is it? Let me know in the comments. I'm back to the point where the main board is removed, and I'll take out the lower screen now. We're still looking to find the cable that's causing the power off problem. The buttons will fall out on their own later, so I recommend taking them out now, even though I don't do it here. To go further, we have to remove the faceplate on the upper screen, which is attached only by adhesive. I use a heat gun to weaken the glue and a number of plastic spudgers to work it out. This is just the beginning of how annoying this handheld is to disassemble. If you didn't take out the buttons earlier, they should be falling out on their own by now. So we'll pop out the stragglers and move them aside. I should also point out there are rubber feet on each side of the top screen that are likely to detach when the faceplate is removed. You could pull them out ahead of time if you wish, just make sure to keep track of them either way. There are six screws to remove here, and I'm still using that 2mm Phillips bit from earlier. Now we can take out the top shell and reveal the ambitious mess that Nintendo brought to existence. Another quick note is that the 3D slider and light polarizer fell out when I removed the shell. We can put the polarizer back here, and the slider here, for safekeeping. Next up, there's a single screw to remove on this board, then we'll pop out this end of the flex, the camera module, speakers, and the screen. There's a strip of adhesive as well that I'll pull off and adhere back to the frame of the screen. Now we'll flip things over and try to figure out the cable mess in the hinge region. We'll pull this wire from the bottom screen and feed it out of the hinge to start. Prying out this piece allows access to the hinge, which I can push through the pivot point with a dental tool. My camera angle isn't great here, but with that hinge pulled, we can pivot out the upper shell at that point, and do the same on the other side by pulling the cables through the slit on the lower shell. 
trying to feed the cables through the upper shell, one has to wonder how in the heck Nintendo tooled up a manufacturing line to perform this task efficiently. Ultimately, the answer for us is rolling up each flex cable tightly to a point of concern so that they can feed through. This last one is particularly challenging, but we manage. Earlier, the suspicion was a bad connection to the screen, and getting a closer look now, I think we've found our problem. The flex is torn right here, straight through a few of these conductors. When the cable is perfectly aligned in this region, it makes contact and affords normal operation, but the flexing action of folding the screen breaks that contact and the unit shuts down. This is exactly what we saw going on earlier. With the important parts reassembled, I can replicate this by pinching the damaged region of the cable with a tweezers to temporarily re-establish contact. The system is on and seemingly working normally, but as soon as I let go, game over. The only long-term solution here is to replace that entire flex cable, which also serves as the connection for both speakers. I don't have the spare part and I've already spent too much time on this video, so I'm gonna call it. I was hoping to add this 3DS to my collection, so it's very likely that I'll swap the cable out at a later date, as there are still affordable options online to replace it. But for now, I hope this video can still serve as a useful troubleshooting guide to any of you dealing with the same or similar issue. Oh, and if you're thinking, oh, he just doesn't want to put it back together because those cables are so annoying. Well, you're probably right. So I guess that's it for today. Thanks for watching, take care, I'll see you in the next one.